Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. If you tap the little like button, we appreciate that too. Okay, in our last video, we got Elsie the Panhead up and running. And that's a very cool thing, but there's a bunch of other stuff needs to be done before I can give her back to her owner. And Mike, I don't know if he's even seen the last video, so I don't know if he knows how well his little panhead is doing. Maybe his wife kept him from seeing it, I'm not sure. Anyway, moving right along. Um, since the last video, I did change the handlebar risers. They're not exactly grand prizes, but they're not falling apart like the old ones were. And I did get them at the Long Beach Swap Meet last weekend, and they didn't cost me much, and that's the best part. So they're on there, and they're working. I put the dash back on. Hit sit and count a caddy wampus. Mike can fix all these little things himself, but I just want the bike up and running and dependable for him. So today I've got, let's see, yesterday I also adjusted the front brake. Now the rear wheel I'm about to take off, which uh, I already cracked some of it loose, but I'm going to get this rear wheel off. I need to put a rear tire on this thing, and as much as I really don't want to, I'm afraid I'm going to have to have a look at that rear brake, which uh, probably going to be pretty exciting in there. I don't know. But we'll get this wheel off. Like I said, the front one's in good shape. In fact, I built that wheel for him a few years ago. And uh, it's in good shape. Well, I cracked these lug bolts loose. In case they were frozen, I didn't really want to spend a bunch of time in the video with it, but they weren't frozen. They came loose. They were nice and tight. I was pleased to see that. And let's see. It's not coming off as easy, easily as the other ones. Okay. And there is number three coming off there. Okay, number three, and here is number four, and the last one is coming out now and there it is number five okay now we'll go around to the other side and get the uh, axle nut off And it's coming right off. Be interesting to see if the axle comes out nice and easy. Maybe, just maybe, Elsie has decided to cooperate on a few things here now. I shouldn't say that. 
Every time I take something apart, I find something else I've never seen before. Okay, the axle nut and the lock washer off of the uh, big sleeve nut here. Yeah, it looks like the axle's going to slide out real nice. Looks like so far. Let me lower the bike down just a little bit. And before I forget, I think I want to take the uh, valve core out of this tire valve. I don't know that I'm going to need to squeeze this tire down, but if I let the air out now, it'll already be out. And it's out. And Mike says it stinks in there. Now, close as I can figure, the last time one of these particular tires was made was somewhere in the 70s. So that's probably how old the air is that's in that tube. It does stink over here. But the axle is now out. We'll get the spacer out of here. Spacer is out. And we'll get the tire off of that, off of that uh, brake drum. Maybe we'll just smack it once or twice here. See if that did anything. Yeah, it did a little. Just a little. I think I'll reach in there with something large and see if I can uh, pull it apart. And it's coming off. Put a little pressure there. Smack the wheel. It actually looks like it's off. Mm -hmm. So we'll just uh, get the brake drum back onto the, the brake and get the wheel off of the brake drum. And maybe we'll jack this thing up and slide the tire right out of there. Something like that. Well, that wasn't too terrible. Let me put it against the cabinet here. And now we'll slide this brake drum off and be ready to get sick. Let's see. Let me see now. Let me get my flashlight. And this brake looks pretty good. And it even looks fairly clean. So I'll get in here and wash it all down with brake clean before I put it back together. And I'd say it's in pretty fair shape. Let me look at the forward shoe. And it's looking good. I'd say everything is pretty much in good shape here. So we'll get it all cleaned up, adjust it up, put a new tire on it, Provided that hub's in good shape, which it felt like it was. And we'll be ready to go here. Now I'm going to get the brake drum out of the way. Because there's one other thing I wanted to do real quick. While the wheel is off, I want to drill a hole for the seat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the fender for the seat. 
And then I'm going to install an insert that the seat bolt will screw right into. Now, I, I, it sounds like a small thing, but in all the years I've been working on bikes, this is one of the things that's really a nuisance. Guy brings his bike in and he can't get the bolt to stay in the rear fender. Or he has to get under it with the wheel off to get the nut on it. To have a nice insert in that hole is really a neat thing. And that's what I'm going to install. We already marked the hole. Let's see. The good news is the tire is off. If you've ever watched anyone drill a hole for their seat and drill right into the rear tire, I mean, you're trying not to laugh at the guy. But he just drilled a hole in his tire. You know it's an expensive mistake. You feel sorry for him. But he just drilled a hole in his own tire. Unless you're working in the shop and you're the one that drills a hole in that tire. Then it's very uncool. Okay. Now, drilling a hole in a fender, you want to do it once. Now, this fender is not something I have to be real careful of. But, at the same time, I use a piece of tape on there and drill a little bitty hole to get started. Now that would have gone right into the tire. I thought about doing it into the tire anyway, since the tire is going in the trash. I'm sorry, it's going to be recycled. We don't put it in the trash. It's a tire. Okay, so the insert we're going to put in here requires a three-eighths hole. So I graduate it slowly up. Okay, one more and we'll be there. And then I can show this insert that I really I've used these for years, <clears throat> but it has to be a 3 8 hole for this insert. It has to be a nice, tight fit. That is a nice tight fit, or it's going to be. Okay, now let me peel the tape off of that ugly hole. Well, look at that, it's a nice hole underneath. And here is the insert. This little insert, and it may slide right in and it may not. Since the camera is watching, it may not. Oh, it is. What I'm going to do is there's the tool. And the bolt. And the insert. Now I'm going to tap that in very softly. I think the camera is driving me nuts here as I try to do this. It's just a little too tight. Just...
Okay. Now that insert went through. The thing is, you'd rather have it a little tight than a little loose. Sorry if it looked like I was being nuts with it, but that's what I was doing, was being nuts with it. Okay, now by holding the tool with one wrench and turning the bolt that is supplied with the tool for the other wrench, it will crimp that insert into place. Just pull that in nice and easy, hold, trying to hold it right down flush on the fender. And it will spread this insert and crimp the edges of the flange so that it lives in that fender like the one that's in my shovel head that's been there for over 30 years now. That's got to pull quite a ways. There it is. I can feel it starting to grab. It's a little unnerving when you start wondering, is it ever going to grab? Okay. pretty tight now. Let me see my light here. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's doing exactly what we want it to. And this insert being into a 3 8 hole will take a quarter 28 bolt to hold that seat down, which is exactly what you want. Okay. I believe we're there. Right. Give it one more shot. Always. There it is. Okay. Now we'll back off on it. Take the bolt out of there. And there it is, a perfect insert in the seat, I mean in the fender, for the seat. There's the bolt going right down all the way into that insert, and that is crimped into that sheet metal fender. It is going nowhere. Anyway, it's not going anywhere the fender's not going, let's put it that way. That's it. Now, I don't normally sell products or anything, and I'm sure not here. But this is an AVK Industrial Products, and it's you buy the tool and you buy the insert. I normally order them from McMaster Car back east. So AVK Industrial Products, that's the insert. 
And if anybody wants one, I only have one left and I'm not parting with it. I need to buy another bag of them. So, anyway, so we got the tire off and we got the insert in the fender, which is way cool. I'd like to show you the seat, but then you wouldn't have any reason to watch the next video. Anyway, the next video we'll put the new tire on and we'll put the seat on. Because it's not the seat we were going to use. We ran across another seat that fit a little nicer. So we're going to use that seat. And it's going to go right there to that insert. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.